The problem was that the politicians have actively chosen not to listen to the entire younger generation of voters. We have this new technology, we have this new culture with file sharing, with the internet, and the politicians don't understand it. They have actively chosen to criminalize the entire younger generation of Swedish citizens and voters. So we tried to make them listen. They didn't want to. The only option left was to challenge them directly on election day at the polls. That's why we started. Right, we, we only have three issues and they're very closely connected. We are talking about shared culture, we're th talking about free knowledge, and we're talking about a protected privacy. And these are very closely connected because if you look at copyright today, the problem is that copyright violations take place in private communications. So if you are to enforce copyright today, you actually start, need to start eavesdropping and monitoring every private communication. And if you do that, out goes the postal secrets, out goes the right to be anonymous when contacting a journalist. And those values are much more fundamentally important to a democratic society than an old income source is for the entertainment industry. We're at a crossroads today where copyright as it stands and the right to privacy, the right to private communication have become mutually exclusive. And since we're at that situation, copyright needs to take a step back. The politicians don't understand that, and that is a problem. We're saying that these three issues that we bring to the table are so important that we won't bring anything else up. We don't think it's important if taxi rides carry a tax on 11 or 12 percent. We don't care if the tax on books is 19 or 20 percent. We don't, really. These three issues are so fundamentally important, we've decided to not bring anything else up. Well, we started here in Sweden, but you got to start somewhere. This is definitely a global movement. We started here on January 1st. There are already 12 other parties starting up or having started already in other countries, and it's, continu it's continuing to spread across the world like wildfire. We are seeing the birth of a new global political power. Well, absolutely. I mean, people on the internet don't really respect national boundaries. Everybody is talking to each other. Uh, we were joking the other day that this is probably the first party to run in the uh, European elections in 2009 as one party across Europe. This has a very strong historical precedent. If you look at the Middle Ages, back then the church controlled it all information every piece of knowledge, every piece of culture, and they were actively opposing that people in general should learn how to read and write. Because the preacher could tell them everything they needed to know anyway, right? They really understood what it meant to lose this chokehold on cultural knowledge. But they did eventually. People did learn to read and write. And the church went mad, of course. The royal houses went mad because, because all of a sudden people could take part of unsanctioned knowledge and culture that hadn't been approved beforehand. And this is exactly what we are seeing today. We are still seeing the same kind of communication, mass communication, as in just 15 years ago there was always one source communicating to the many like a newspaper had a one responsible publisher communicating to the many. A TV station was sent from one source, uh, and so on and so forth. Today, however, with the internet, millions of people are exchanging culture and knowledge organically all the time on the internet. There's nobody 
to, be, to hold responsible anymore if the wrong piece of knowledge should, should spread. And this is crucial because all of a sudden there's no way to control the information. There's no way to control culture, control knowledge. And those who control culture and knowledge control the world. You don't have to set laws. It's enough to control what people know and believe. And that is losing its last control points. So people don't understand how big this really is, but it is. I mean, it's huge. It's hard to tell how many votes we'll collect. Uh, we are, we do need 225,000 votes to gain seats in parliament. There are 1.2 million file sharing people in Sweden, which means that if as much, if as, much as one fifth of these criminalized, demonized people just say enough is enough, one-fifth, that's enough, then we'll actually get into Parliament. So that's, that's our chances, but I mean it's still 47 days to go and a lot of things can happen in that, in that term. We are ready, yes. We've ha we had our can candidates, we have our, we have our roadmap, or we don't call it roadmap, we're pirates, we, we have our chart. And uh, we believe this is the start of something big. Oh, they're trying to pretend we don't exist because, I mean, we know our issues better than anybody else. And they know this. And we are refusing to discuss anything else because we don't deal with those issues. So we've chosen not to have any, any political vulnerability. There is no way to confront us on an area that we don't know better than anybody else. So, I mean, it's, it's hard to know. We've been discussing a lot with the youth leagues, and that's kind of an interesting thing, because the dividing line in, on these issues don't go between the traditional liberal and socialist blocs. They go between the mother parties and their youth leagues. The youth leagues entirely agree with our points, the mother parties don't. I do, actually. Um, with the... Uh, with the advent of the entertainment industry lobby, we are under siege. We seriously are. They are doing everything they can to prevent progress, to prevent the spread of culture, and to prevent privacy as we know it. The only way to stop this is to unite. We have shown in Sweden that we can do it. The only thing it takes is for somebody to stick a flag in the ground and saying, here, let's gather around this and put an end to their lobbying.